Hello, my name is Jamie Uxell, and I'm going to talk about stochastic light cuts. The stochastic light cuts method provides the most efficient solution to rendering with a large number of light sources, aka the many lights problem. The many lights problem has growing importance in computer graphics as we continue to render more and more complex scenes with many lights in them. That's because many real environments contain lots of lights. But the history of the many lights problem is often tied to instant radiosity, which is not instant or radiosity, but it's the concept of approximating global illumination using virtual lights, which are generated from the actual scene lights. Nonetheless, regardless of how the lights are generated, virtual, hand place, or procedural, we may have to deal with the complexity of many lights during rendering. So what do we do? The standard approach is to brute force it, meaning look at all lights while shading. Obviously, that can be too slow if we have many lights. When we have too many lights, we can do important sampling by considering only a fraction of the lights. The method described by Pete Shirley and his colleagues suggests using light intensities as importance weights. And in the absence of any other information, that's probably the best we can do, but it doesn't always provide the best weights because they're not localized. Meaning we're not getting different sets of weights at different parts of a scene, which is really crucial. Nonetheless, I consider this approach as the baseline and whatever clever thing we do on top of this, we should never get results that are worse than traditional importance sampling because this is the simplest thing we can do. For achieving a more efficient localized solution, the first method that was introduced was light cuts followed by matrix row column sampling. And both of these methods suffer from sampling correlation because they keep picking the same light samples. As a result, the solutions are temporally unstable and they incur a substantial amount of flickering. The lighting grid hierarchy we introduced at SIGGRAPH 2017 takes a different approach that is temporally stable. And in the context of explosion rendering, it also provides orders of magnitude faster solution than light cuts, even though it actually samples more light sources than light cuts. At, at I3D this year, uh, we've also shown that the lighting grid hierarchy method allows real-time computation of global illumination with virtual lights. We could render images including global illumination within 30 milliseconds or less, uh, but it still considers a fairly large number of light samples per pixel, and its efficiency comes from exploiting the properties of rasterization, deferred shading, GPU ray tracing, and shadow ratio estimation. Finally, adaptive tree splitting was presented last year at HPG, and it includes the idea of hierarchical sampling that we also use in this paper, but it doesn't have the nice convergence rate of light cuts, and it can produce results with higher noise than traditional important sampling, which should never happen. So a common problem with all of these methods and their variants is that they all need a relatively large number of light samples to converge to an acceptable result with high enough accuracy or low enough noise. The stochastic light cuts method introduced in this paper preserves the unmatched convergence rates of light cuts. On top of that, it is temporally stable, it can handle any type of light source, and it produces low noise with much fewer light samples, resulting in more than an order of magnitude faster lighting estimation. Since our method is based on light cuts, I'd like to briefly review the light cuts method first and explain why it is unstable. Given a set of scene lights, light cuts build a light tree. This tree building is a stochastic process to avoid bias, but once a tree is built, the same tree is used for the entire image. Notice in this color-coded representation that each internal node of the tree contains a representative light, which is shared with one of its child nodes. The lighting estimation at a given scene point begins with the root node of the tree and its representative light. If the maximum possible illumination that can come from this root node is above the threshold, the, we move the cut one level below and add another light sample. Similarly, for each node right above the cut, if the maximum possible illumination for the node is above the threshold, we move the cut further down, adding another light sample. And this continues until all nodes above the cut are either leaf nodes or their maximum illumination are below the threshold. So we get different result, different cuts at different scene points. This provides a localized solution since the maximum possible illumination depends on the chosen scene point. Um, I must say that this is a slightly simplified explanation because light cuts does not directly consider the incoming light intensity but the reflected light off of the shared surface, but that's besides the point. 
The problem with light cuts is that the lights near the top of the tree are more likely to be sampled. For example, the representative light of the root node is always sampled. This leads to sampling correlation and temporal instability because different light trees favor different lights. Unfortunately, it's not possible to determine to generate the same light tree always just to avoid temporal instability without causing other more severe problems. Here's an example sequence rendered using light cuts in a scene with 1400 light sources. You see that the flickering can be substantial. With the stochastic light cuts method introduced in this paper, we eliminate this problem and we can make the lighting estimation so much faster. The key idea is removing the representative lights from the light tree. Instead, we treat each internal node as a collection of the lights below its subtree. When we, need to, when we need to sample a node, we simply select one of its lights at random. And the simple change completely eliminates sampling correlation. As a result, we eliminate flickering and replace it with noise. Furthermore, since we don't have to worry about designing some representative light type, Unlike light cuts, we can use any type of light source without any restriction. Moreover, again unlike light cuts, we don't have to execute the lighting estimation until it converges. We can limit the maximum light sample count, and that limit can be a very small number. Yes, that will lead to more noise in lighting estimation, but with other multi-sampling operations that are already happening in the renderer, the noise is automatically diminished, and it could even be eliminated with a noise filter in the end. But with such a limit, more than an order of magnitude faster computation can be easily achieved. The question is, given a node, how are you going to randomly pick a light sample for it? Of course, we'd like to do some sort of important sampling here, and any important sampling scheme would work. But we can do something great and localized if we, if we just use the light tree that already exists. And this brings us to our hierarchical important sampling method. And here's how it works. Uh, we're going to go down the tree step by step. Uh, let's say that we'd like to pick a light sample for the root node of the tree. And first we're going we're gonna to consider its two child nodes and assign probabilities for picking either child node. These probabilities are based on some importance weights shown as W1 and W2, and I'll talk about how to properly compute those later. Um, based on these probabilities, we roll the dice and pick one. Then we look at the probabilities of its child nodes. And we continue this process until we reach a leaf node. And the light source at the leaf node is considered as the light sample for all the internal nodes along this path down the tree. Of course, the quality of the sampling scheme depends on how the weights are computed. A naive solution for computing the weights would be doing something similar to the error bound formulation of light cuts. In this formulation, Wj is the weight of the child node j to be computed. Fj is the reflectance bound that combines the material and geometry terms. Ij is the total light intensity of the child node. And dj min is the minimum distance to the bounding box of the child node. The problem with this naive formulation is that this minimum distance can be easily zero. This would lead to an infinite weight and completely break important sampling. So we cannot do that. To avoid this, we can just pick a point within the bounding box, let's say the center of the, uh, the child node bounding box, and we can use the distance to that point. Note that this is the approach that's used by adaptive tree splitting, the HPG paper from last year. The problem with this approach is that, though less likely, it can also be zero. And perhaps more importantly, the distance to the center is not always a good representative for computing weights, especially when the bounding box is large. So what do we do? It's quite simple, really. If both childs are far, we simply use the minimum distance. If one of the child nodes is too close, we simply ignore the distance term while computing the weights for both child nodes. And what does far mean in this context? Well, that's easy too. We just compare the minimum distance uh, to the size of the child node bounding box, more specifically the length of its diagonal. And this formulation avoids the singularities that make the weights go into infinity and provides a good representation for the relative importance of the child nodes. Another consideration we have is what we call dead branches. Uh, this happens when the reflectance bounds fj is zero for all lights within a subtree. 
the algorithm we describe in the paper avoids picking light samples from dead branches. And this is particularly important when we're using very few light samples and we don't want to waste one of them uh, with a light sample that cannot contribute any illumination. The details are in the paper. Now let's see how stochastic light cuts compares to light cuts and other stochastic sampling methods. We will first look at direct illumination only from 1400 light sources on the ceiling in the scene. Fully converged light cuts up to 1000 light samples still show significant flickering. Dropping the limit to 100 light samples increases flickering. With 10 light samples we just get garbage. Stochastic light cuts, however, produces stable results with only 10 light samples. Next, let's see how they compare with path tracing in a scene with over 1600 lights. Light cuts with up to 1000 light samples still show some minor flickering. Again, dropping the limit to 100 increases flickering. With 10 light samples, we again get garbage. With stochastic light cuts, we get stable results with only 10 light samples. The last scene I'll show you includes 1 million virtual light sources. Light cuts with up to 1000 light samples has quite visible flickering in this case. With 100 light samples, the flickering becomes extreme. And I don't know if I need to show you 10 light samples, but here it is. In this case, stochastic light cuts produces stable but noisy results with 10 light samples. Increasing the limit to 100 significantly reduces the noise in this scene. If we compare the performance of light cuts that is fully converged using up to 1000 light samples and stochastic light cuts with only 10 light sam samples, of course we see some substantial speed up, uh, ranging from 15x to 40x in these scenes. But if, if we use the same light sample bound for both methods, we see the overhead of our stochastic light cuts. A part of this overhead comes from the cost of hierarchical sampling using the entire light tree, as opposed to just picking the representative lights. But most of it comes from the fact that light cuts in the scene uses the very same 10 light sources for the entire image. So it's very cash friendly for what it's worth. In comparison to other stochastic sampling methods, in our tests, stochastic light cuts always produces the lowest noise. We show this with a simple test scene that includes a single scene light and 10,000 virtual lights generated from it. With only one light sample per pixel, we get a noisy estimate as expected. Note that we're only sampling the root node of the light tree here because we only have one sample. But the noise is still less than baseline that is traditional important sampling. That's because of our hierarchical important sampling technique. The same, however, cannot be said for adaptive tree splitting. It improves the bottom half of the image slightly at the cost of more noise for the top half of the image. If we add more light samples, the unmatched convergence rate of light cuts kicks in and the noise is reduced significantly. Of course, traditional important sampling cannot provide a similar reduction in noise. Interestingly, adaptive cheese splitting still produces more noise than traditional important sampling for the top part of the image here. I'm, I'm showing parts of the images side by side here. You can see that stochastic light cuts produce a significantly lower noise. In conclusion, the stochastic light cuts method eliminates the sampling correlation of light cuts and thereby eliminates the temporal instability and flickering, lifts any restrictions on the light types that can be used, allows easily an order of magnitude faster lighting estimation, produces less noise than other stochastic sampling methods, and it is particularly well suited for rendering algorithms like path racing that use multi-sampling. One interesting observation for future work is that with stochastic light cuts, different light trees produce different amounts of noise at different parts of the scene. 
So consider the highlighted area of these two images rendered using the same settings but with different trees. Notice that the, the top part of the image on the right has more noise while the bottom part gets less noise. Um, for both of these examples, we use the same stochastic light tree building process of the original light cuts method. But with stochastic light cuts, the light tree building process does not have to be stochastic. And we can use a deterministic algorithm because we, it wouldn't introduce any bias. Figuring out the optimal method for building a light tree would be an interesting direction for future research. With that note, I'd like to thank you for your attention and let you know that you can find the paper and its supplemental documents that includes the pseudocode on the project page here. Thank you.